I can share my experience in a bit. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Philip. Um, so just to g give you an idea about uh, the structure of today's webinar, um, we will first present to you the program in general that you get an idea so um, that you get an overview of of the of the software uh, then philip will explain to you uh, why it's useful uh, for uh, teaching as he has got experience in this regard and um, then i will show you a few uh, project examples uh, that you see uh, how you can use this software um, for simulation purposes. Um, so generally, uh, our company, Vela Solaris, is, uh, has been founded uh, about 15 years ago. Um, it is a spin-off company of the Institute for Solar Technik, Institute for Solar Technology, Rapperswil in the in close to Zurich um, and this Institute for Solar Technology is part of the University of uh, Rapperswil. It has uh, developed uh, Polisan for the first time already in 1992 and um, since then the develop the software was developed further and further. Initially it was only for solar thermal but then um, also the other technologies were added and uh, as i said for now about 15 years we are uh, developing the software and we are also marketing it around the world it is used in uh, more than 50 countries uh, at universities by uh, planners by system planners uh, by architects, uh, engineers, by, of course, companies, specialized companies in the field of renewable energies. And the interesting thing about Polisan is that you can combine different technologies with each other. So, as I've just mentioned, we started off with solar thermal, but uh, today you can uh, simulate also photovoltaic systems, heat pumps, ground source loops, cogeneration units, and so on. So actually, uh, all the systems which might be interesting for building integrated uh, systems. And uh, so you can combine these different technologies with each other. And this we will also uh, briefly see today. So uh, not to lose any more time about uh, introduction comments, I would now uh, like to start you can see my screen i hope so uh, at least um, and uh, you usually when you use polisan for the first time you would start with the wizard and uh, when you the wizard is not actually what polisan is about Poly, you will see now very soon the graphical user interface and you will see how flexible it is um, but uh, of course if you use polisan for, for the very first time uh, the wizard is a starting help. It's a project assistant uh, to uh, to get started. And uh, first of all, you can use here, uh, you can choose here the location from a database or from a map. So um, we have worldwide weather data integrated in the software. So you can, for example, uh, choose here from Europe, from North America, Asia, Oceania, wherever you are. Um, or you can choose from a map. Um, so uh, here, for example, you can also write the name. And then automatically the cursor goes to this place and you can um, confirm it. Then you can click on continue uh, and you have the possibility here uh, to choose your system according to the energy providers and the loads. Um, 
Polisan contains about 1,000 systems. Uh, so the, the, as the choice is enormous, of course, this filter helps you a lot to choose your system. So for example, if we want to start with a solar thermal system for domestic hot water, for example, then you can do your settings here and you will see the um, available uh, system templates on the right. If you hover with the mouse over them, you can see the hydraulic layout. So you can choose a system which is suitable for your purposes. So you confirm that, then you can do some settings for domestic hot water here, but you can do more detailed settings later on when you uh, see directly the uh, graphical user interface. So you click on continue, <clears throat> then you can choose your collector here from a huge database. Um, we have got all uh, collectors here with uh, solar key mark, so you can uh, choose your collector from this database. And then once you have chosen your collector, then you can um, uh, uh, set the orientation here. Uh, as you can see from this uh, graph, uh, south is zero, north is 180, uh, plus 90 is uh, east, and minus 90 is west. So, for example, if you are in Australia, as we have chosen now a location in Melbourne, um, the orientation would be typically north. So it's 180, and then you can adapt the tilt angle here. And Polisan uh, suggests you a certain number of collectors for the template which you have chosen and the location, <clears throat> and also a certain tank volume which you can also adapt here from the, um, from the database. You, can, uh, you have also all sorts of um, tanks, of all sorts of storage tanks here, and you can uh, choose them directly from the list. You confirm, you can do the same for the heat generator. But as I said, I want to really to show to you the graphic user interface and not uh, mm, not uh, show you too long the wizard. Uh, I want to proceed. So after you have completed the wizard, you will automatically get the first results. The simulation has run. You see here 6.8 seconds. The duration of the simulation depends upon the system. If it is more complex, of course, it will take a longer time. But this is a very simple system, so it, it's very, really very fast. And of course, the short simulation time also enables you to compare systems with each other very quickly. Uh, so first you get this results overview, but this results overview is very, very general. Um, so you can go here into the menu results and have a look at more detailed results. For example, here the system results where you get a good overview of the system. You can see here, for example, <clears throat> the energy demand. Um, then you, you see, for example, here, the solar radiation onto the collector area, um, the solar yield, uh, solar thermal yield of the collector field. Uh, you um, see here the solar energy which goes to the tanks, you can check or to the tank in this case, you can check the solar fraction. So uh, many, many values here, how much energy is supplied by the heat generator. In this case, we have a gas boiler. Um, this is, as I said, an overview of the system. If you want to know further details, you can go into component results, where, as the name already says, you will find um, single uh, values for for the components, not for the whole system. So you will find some more values which you were not able to see before. For example, the temperatures for the collector, the, the average temperatures over 24 hours, the temperatures during operation, 
Um, you will see, for example, also for the storage tank, the single temperatures, and you will notice here we have 12 layers. Uh, that is necessary to simulate also the stratification of the tank. Um, now here you have these again these temperatures of the single layers. Now you might say I'm not interested in the average temperatures for each month. I want to know the temperatures of uh, certain moments. Then you can go deeper. You can go into the graphical evaluation, and you can, for example, choose a week here. Then you can click on Add Curve. You can, for example, then choose certain values which you want to see like uh, for example the collector field yield then you can add a further curve and then as we have just seen the storage tank uh, has 12 layers so i want to know what is happening in the lower layer and what is happening in the top layer for example now we have obviously two units so we should change axis now of course this is not so easy to see for you yellow so we can change the color and then you can see for example what is happening in the system uh, during uh, this week you see here in red the collector field yield you see for example here on this day the collector field yield is not as high and you see how the temperature in the lower uh, layer of the tank drops but in the upper part, it's kept high, of course, thanks to the boiler. So the graphical, user, uh, the graphical evaluation is really very nice because you can analyze uh, the system in detail and you choose the values which you want to see. Um, you see, we have many different uh, types of results. The time is limited, so I cannot show them uh, all to you. Um, and we will see, of course, some of them again when we uh, have a look at the project examples later on. Um, but uh, one more I want to show to you briefly, that's the simulation analysis. Because if you want to go even deeper into the software, then you can uh, have a look at the simulation analysis, which will show you the results of the single time steps. So you see here exactly what is happening in the system. And you see that we are talking about a very detailed simulation. It's not, um, uh, it's not, an even, it's not an hourly simulation. It's even more detailed. You can see this here from the number of time steps. You know very well that a year has got 8,760 hours, <clears throat> but already here, on 9th of January, we are still very early in the year, we are already at simulation time step 4,337, and you can check exactly the temperatures, uh, the flow rate, uh, the, the power here of, of this um, collector field in that very moment. And you can see, for example, here 9th of January, 9.34 and 35 seconds and when you click here on plus you see the next time step so you see also you see exactly the length of the time step it's like here 75 seconds again 75 seconds but the length varies according to what is happening in the system um, so for example now here at 10 a.m uh, we start to consume domestic hot water you can see this here and then you see the next time step is only 10 seconds long so it depends up, uh, upon the the situation how long the time step is it's a dynamic uh, simulation um, so we have got here six menus you have already seen the results menu um, at least some examples of it we have also system diagram and project there's not much to say about this but uh, quite interesting also the menu for the catalogs. We have uh, databases of all components in Polisan, not only for the collector. You see here the enormous amounts of uh, databases which we have in Polisan. 
So you can choose from an, an from a vast array of, of components, of products, which really exist on the market. And additionally, you can also add your own components if, it, if you don't find what you're looking for. Uh, options, you can uh, here uh, choose your language, change your uh, currency and so on. For example, for the, uh, for the financial analysis, and also we have a user manual. Uh, the user manual, as you can see, is almost 300 pages long. So as there is a lot of information also in this user manual, you can see this here from the, from the uh, contents. We have here um, photovoltaics, solar thermal, heat pumps, other components, controllers. We will have a brief look at them as well the different simulation results, profitability calculation, and so on. And we have also videos. Um, and you can click directly on these links. You see they are directly linked with YouTube. And you can watch them and also get an idea of more topics uh, in Polisan. And uh, if you uh, open the German manual, you will find even more. So if you know some German, there are even more videos in German. Um, so. This is the graphic user interface, which I wanted to show to you. Uh, that is uh, really uh, what Polisan is about. You usually work with the graphic user interface. And um, everything you see here on the right side in the design area is not a picture. It is an interactive area. You can click here on all the components. And when you uh, click uh, on a component, when you double click it actually, then a dialog window opens and you will see here the symbol for the database. You can then open again the catalog, uh, what we have already seen briefly before with the uh, solar thermal collectors. But as I said, not only the solar for the solar thermal collectors we have catalogs also for the tank you already saw this of course also for the boiler you have here different fuels also you see gas oil pellets firewood and so on you can change very easily from boiler to heat pump to air source heat pump we have also here an enormous uh, catalog of uh, air source heat pumps which are defined through the reference points heating power at certain temperatures electrical power at certain temperatures and um, even for the pipes we have a, a database with different diameters different materials and so on so it's very very detailed and very nicely done because uh, clicking on it you can exchange the components uh, this also is regarding for example domestic hot water you can do your settings here uh, different values for different months you can define a daily profile and so on and so on so this uh, design area is is really crucial for polisan and not only you can exchange all the components here but with the uh, Polisan designer and also the educational version, you can also uh, edit these systems. So for example, here you can now copy a system. We can give it a different name, but now for time reasons, we don't do it. And for example, now if you want to edit this system, now I will do a very quick example. And let's say we don't want to have this three-way valve here, this mixing valve here, then we can click on it. We can delete it and so you can edit these systems and you can do this with all the systems which we have 1000 systems so this way of course you can create many more systems than you actually have here and now you can simulate the system again by going on to results without the three-way valve for example a very simple example to be able to show it within seconds but of course you can do also uh, more complex issues you could even uh, start with a blank page and with the help of these um, these icons 
you can uh, create your own uh, system. Of course, you have to connect the single components with each other and you must make sure that you put the controllers and that you set them properly. So this, of course, is very important. We have um, many different types of controllers in Polisan. Uh, you can see here um, an overview uh, and we have also the very um, powerful uh, programmable controller which allows you to not only to set temperatures and choose um, uh, the sensors but also allows you to define freely the control logics. Um, so the controllers are, are really also very, very important uh, in uh, Polisan. And we have also a profitability calculation where you can do all your settings uh, of the system. Um, now, well, the, the simulation is running again because I took out the, the uh, three-way valve. Uh, but anyway, just to show this very briefly to you, you can set here the conditions uh, of course, the electricity prices, um, the system costs, operation maintenance, even if you have to pay interests uh, for a loan which you might have needed to finance your system. So <clears throat> you have got here uh, all these possibilities. And once you have done all your settings, then you can compare the systems with each other. This I have prepared, of course, because now we don't have the time to do all this, uh, but you can compare different systems with each other regarding the profitability. And uh, here we can, for example, see that we have three systems where we have to do some investment compared to another one, which is here the black one. Uh, but uh, then after some time, uh, these uh, systems are more profitable than the uh, old system thanks to the uh, energy savings and of course also the savings in terms of costs. And it's also interesting, it's also a question when do we pay back the system? This here for example the red system pays back earlier but on the long run the yellow system is even the most convenient. So it's not only a question of does it pay back, but also when. And of course, then we can uh, ask, for example, the client uh, uh, when, uh, how much time does he have, how patient is he, have, when does he want to have it paid back. So th that's obviously then also a very personal issue. Um, so um, I have talked about all these templates, and here you can see the list of the templates uh, on the left bottom you see here different folders and we have lots of templates inside here and you can also load these templates directly from here so you don't have to start with the wizard once you know your um, your polisan well then you uh, can uh, load them directly from here and then do all your settings by double clicking on the components and uh, work this way with Polisan. You can also create here your own folder of favorite systems uh, so that you um, don't have to look for them once you, um, you know your way around in Polisan. Here you have some special systems and here you have company templates uh, which have been designed for um, for companies. You can see their names and um, uh, you can use all of them. Also in the educational version, you can use all of these <coughs> uh, templates. So there is really an enormous amount of uh, templates and an enormous amount of products inside which also, of course, gives the students a very uh, good overview of the market. And uh, the student can very quickly compare different system configurations with each other, so can very easily understand how renewable energy systems work, uh, which, of course, especially for a student 
often is uh, rather difficult if he has no um, work experience, which, which of course is, is uh, normal at, at a young age. So uh, it's, uh, this software is very helpful really to get an, an idea uh, how, how systems work. And uh, as we have seen, the simulation times are short, so he can quickly compare. So this would be a very rough uh, introduction into the software. The software is very rich. Uh, you might have gathered already an idea, but uh, that, uh, of course, it's now, um, well, you will have a chance to, to, uh, to test it, to have a closer look at it. And then you, uh, of course, we are always available uh, to um, introduce to you to introduce you personally into the software that you um, that we will also be able to answer your personal questions because you might have different interests uh, so uh, that there will be a chance also to do that today is just uh, a chance to to give an overview of the system and before I present um, a few um, project examples. Uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, Philip uh, regarding his experiences with uh, Polisan, especially when it comes to teaching. Yes, thank you, Andreas. Um, I have used Polisan in two different environments. Like I first came across Polisan when I was working for a business development unit um, in a big German company, and we tried to sell um, solar heat and solar electricity systems for industrial processes. So um, there I used the full range and, and we got the, the actual load profiles from the companies. So, so it is possible to do super detailed analysis of things. But what I really liked in the teaching was um, you, you, you load one of these templates as a student and you have zero ideas, not quite zero idea, because you, you, you need to be a good teacher. Um, so you have no idea what, what the, the system is all about, but you start to see uh, um, results and you start to see if you start changing things, you ch change the temperatures, you change the electricity output, you change the number of panels and so forth. You can uh, very easily get first results and then ease yourself into a more complex uh, um, uh, situation quite yeah quite well like I've, I've used it now two years in a row uh, with a group of students like in, in in summer schools and yeah summer school is two weeks so the students don't really have too much time to get experts but after two weeks I, I got like fantastic results from the students I usually uh, like this year it was an uh, um, uh, pandemic um, induced online course and it was fantastic so the students could share their screens with each other you have these subgroups that can work with each other and they can really produce meaningful uh, um, um, output and i had um, 10 different groups and 10 very different systems and the students were free to like really uh, come up with ideas come up with like innovative solutions and find um uh, a template that was like roughly fitting and then they custom make it and I was impressed by what the students were able to get out of it and then of course on a later stage if you want to use this in the real world you you, you get more and more details so yeah I, I was impressed by by how this way of modeling things really yeah inspired the students to be creative and innovative so Andreas, if you want to show the yes, thank uh, you, thank you, Philip, for for these insights uh, from an insider. <laughs> so this is really very important, and um, yeah, it's really uh, about learning by doing, you know, because obviously a student is also more motivated uh, if he uh, can do something practical. And um, this is obviously uh, sometimes the problem if he's studying and studying in books and reading and he has, it's difficult for him to imagine things. But now with the software, he really feels more a part of the, of the lecture. 
and uh, for that reason it's really it's really a great tool to be used uh, uh, during the lecture and a great if tool. I may add something yes, please, it's like please. especially in, on, in, in online learning like I was amazed how engaged they all of a sudden got like I was thinking during the online mm. lectures they were all falling asleep and then I started <laughs> to work and then all of a sudden there was like oh uh, professor how do you do this and like there was like real interaction and it was I, yes. a, um, a really good experience, especially in the online environment, which we will see more of now, I'm sure. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. And currently, of course, we are doing practically all by online and uh, it's all around the world. It's like this or well, or at least in most of the countries, it, direct uh, personal uh, lectures are not possible at the moment or have not been possible for a long time. So, uh, especially in these situations, of course, the software is perfect because you, uh, the the students, yeah, as you have said, get engaged, and that's that's great. I mean, um, because everybody of of us also knows how difficult online lectures are for the teachers and for the students because we don't see each other, and uh, so it's um, yeah, it's really a, a perfect way. So thank you very much again, uh, Philip, for, for your insights. Now I, I will show you, um, as I have mentioned, a few um, examples. Uh, so uh, I have prepared something for you. You see the project is opening now. And so let's, let's imagine uh, we have uh, this um, house. Uh, and this house is now placed in Adelaide, for example, and uh, now we can uh, simulate this house in, in different ways. For example, first <clears throat> we uh, have got simply here a heat pump uh, with a tank and we want to simulate only domestic hot water, not a heating as we don't have any heating in the house, let's say as it is rather common in many Australian houses um, so um, we could do just the thermal simulation here as a first step and uh, then of course we could have a look at the system results so the system now here is running and um, here then the thermal results are shown <coughs> uh, the most important issues here um, uh, for example, the total energy demand, as we have said, this is only domestic hot water. Uh, you see here a higher um, demand in late winter uh, because the cold water is colder. So, of course, we need more energy to reach the same uh, hot water temperatures than in summer. Uh, we have also here um, then the chance to see the thermal output of the heat pump and the electricity which is required to drive the heat pump. Of course, you can check these results even more in detail in component results. We can go here into heat pump. You see <clears throat> here uh, again also the temperatures. Again, of course, these values which we could check already in the system results. And uh, we see also the average performance factor of the uh, heat pump we uh, can see for example operation times and the time uh, it uh, switch the times it switches on and many other issues as we have already seen briefly now this would be the um, the starting point just a thermal system but now the house owner wants to integrate the system um, and um, so uh, and he wants to consider everything in the household not only the thermal part but he wants to take into consideration also the electricity consumption and this we can set here for example uh, through this uh, icon and um, we can uh, have here a catalog for with different load profiles here we have for example the residential profile for southern hemisphere and um, we can include the electricity consumption of the thermal components. Uh, 
this is very, very comfortable in Polisan uh, because uh, Polisan is, it is doing anyway the thermal simulation, we, no, which I've shown to you now. Polisan knows exactly when and how much electricity is being consumed by the heat pump. So we don't have to invent uh, a profile uh, because anyway, it would be wrong or it would be very rough. Um, so um, Polisan knows this exactly uh, for all the time steps. And then of course we add the, the profile for the domestic appliances which here is, for example, 3,500 kilowatt hours. But of course, it's not one value. This is just shown here. It's, it, there are thousands of values um, to define the, uh, the consumption in the household. Then match together uh, with the heat pump, we get the total thermal <clears throat> and uh, electrical. And we say we add now um, a PV system, okay? I haven't shown to you today how you define the PV system, but it's really easy and of course you can edit. So it's usually much easier than simul to simulate PV systems than thermal systems. And um, then you go again onto system results. You have a look at how the system works uh, with the PV system. And then you see now we get two tab sheets in the system results. We get the thermal results and the electrical results. And um, if we look now at ETOT, which is the total um, uh, fuel or electricity, or of course, in this case, it's only electricity, um, electricity consumption, then of course, a positive value means more consumption then production and the negative value as it is consumption means of course more production so we can already see here a balance i go quickly back <clears throat> to the previous system which you have seen um so uh, sorry i had got now the wrong ones the system results of course so if you look here, here we have, of course, only the electricity of the heat pump. And you see, of course, it's all consumption. But now we have added the PV system here. And so here we have the, the overall balance. And we see, for example, in summer, we have more um, uh, production. So the, the consumption values are negative. And in winter, we have still more consumption. But now this, of course, is only a general overview. Then we can go much deeper and really see if we can match the, um, the consumption and the production. And of course, <clears throat> if we look at it at first sight and we have a total electricity consumption, so heat pump and household together of 4,272 kilowatt hours, but uh, and, and we have, if we look at this, a photovoltaic yield of 5,457 kilowatt hours. So if we look at it at first sight, oh, we say, that's great. Our photovoltaic yield is much higher than our consumption. And uh, at first sight, we might think the thing is, is fine and it's done. But of course, it's not that easy because it's a question of matching consumption and production and that is possible thanks to the uh, to the time step simulation and we see indeed here that the it's not all that easy because we have a self consumption so that means when we have consumption and production at the same time of only 1860 so uh, it's not at all uh, so uh, positive and if we uh, then compare the self-consumption with the total electricity consumption, we have a degree of self-sufficiency over the year of uh, about 43%. So that means, of course, we still need a lot of energy from the external grid. Um, we can obviously also look at it at from another point of view. We can also compare of 
the total yield which we have, how much is self-consumption, uh, and then we have the self-consumption fraction, which is this value. So, um, if I our house owned in here, sorry, and to put some Australian context in here, with the new regulations that that uh, um, PV plants are allowed to be curtailed, these kind of simulations are getting more and more important. Like AMO has, I don't know, a month or two ago, released this this uh, uh, new regulation that uh, new in, newly installed photovoltaic plants can be shut off. So if you design the plant well, that you have a lot of self-consumption in it, then it doesn't matter what AMO does. So so this way, uh, it's a way to like easily teach the students or the engineers or whoever are using this uh, to see the benefit of like a, a complex design of a system. Just, just yes, to put yes, this into a bit of for, Australian for, context, recent news, so to say. Yes. Thank you, Philip, for, for adding this comment. And you see indeed here that you can not only check how much energy you need from the grid, but how much energy you will feed into the grid with this system. And that's, of course, then also crucial. Now, again, here we see the monthly values, but of course, you know, we can also check the detailed values. And regarding the curtailment, we can also, in the electric grid, we can also um, uh, limit this here according to the national regulations. So we can have like also a feed-in power limitation. And uh, uh, here we ha haven't set it, but we can set it. So um, then, of course, th uh, things will be different again. But now our house owner uh, says, OK, I have still, I still need too much energy from the grid. And I, uh, um, I also feed too much energy into the grid, uh, although, as we have seen, my PV installation is, cons is producing more in total over the year than I am uh, consuming. Uh, so he says, I want to add a battery. And uh, so he tries out a simulation with this small battery to see what happens. He clicks on system results, <clears throat> and uh, we will see in a moment uh, what's the situation. And uh, so we go directly here in electrical results. Um, and now we, you see you have a difference between self-consumption and direct consumption. Um, direct consumption is uh, what uh, we get directly from the roof. Uh, what we consume directly from the roof, of course, via the inverter, that's clear. And self-consumption is now including also what is first stored in the battery and then being consumed. And thanks to that, we get, of course, a higher degree of self-sufficiency. It's 58% now compared to the 43, which we had before. But still, of course, we still need a lot of energy from the grid and we still maybe feed too much into the grid. So now our house owner decides to put a larger battery and um, then let's see what uh, will be the result uh, this time and we look at the electric results and now it's totally different you can see here uh, we have now uh, we are almost self-sufficient we are uh, over the year of more than 80% in summer. So from uh, October, well, not even only summer, even spring, from October till March, so half of the year, we are almost really self-sufficient uh, or with values around 95%. And you see now we need only very, very little energy from the grid in these months. Only in winter, of course, it's more problematic, but in summer, it's really perfect. And uh, we, in winter, of course, the other way around, we feed only very little into the grid because uh, the battery can take it all. And um, uh, then, um, well, we still need to add some, but uh, of course, overall, the situation is much, much better. You see also the self-consumption fraction is really high. 76 percent 
Uh, you can also display this in a system comparison that you can see these values all together. Um, so let's have a look also at them. Now one system we haven't simulated so far, so that is simulated again. Now, for example, if we want to see here uh, the electricity uh, which, um, which we have here, for example, we can also, we can all check these values, especially the first one is interesting. What we need from the external grid, we can see very well in a clear comparison here and see how different uh, these values are um, according to the different settings or also what we need to fit into the grid. So we can see this at uh, first sight. So this would be an example just for domestic hot water, but we have also the possibility to simulate uh, heating and cooling as it is this case. Here we have uh, domestic hot water, heating and cooling with an, an heat pump. And um, we have also now here, for example, a PV system, and here PV system and battery. And uh, we can, of course, also do the simulation in this case and have a look. This is now, of course, a much more complex system um, because we have uh, many more consumers. It will be more demanding to reach a high, um, uh, a high uh, self-sufficiency uh, but, uh, of course, Polisan can help us to design this system well. And you see, of course, here, first of all, also the, uh, the total energy demand is, is, is really different. Um, we see, of course, the base load by uh, domestic hot water. Uh, but then here we have a little bit of heating requirements in, in winter. We have more cooling requirements in summer. Um, and if we look at the electrical results here, here, for example, we reach a degree of self-sufficiency of 63%, but of course it depends upon uh, the system, the dimension of the system. So, of course, the, 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 it's not so uh, easy to say this, uh, uh, or it's not possible at all to say this in general words, but just to give you an idea here. Um, so, this uh, now is an example for uh, PV uh, and heat pump. Now let's also, because already the time is over actually, but before we will uh, stop and we will give also you, you the chance to ask some questions. Um, so uh, uh, I want to show to you also a system for solar thermal. Um, and of course, you can combine them also with each other. You have even systems here, like for example, if you look at this here, you have <coughs> a solar thermal, air source, heat pump, and PV all together. And we have also PVT, so that it's all very flexible, as I have already mentioned several times. Um, and here we have process heat, for example. So um, we have a system. Uh, with a very large solar thermal uh, field. You, we, you see here 120 collectors, total gross area 240 square meters. And um, we, we see here the thermal output, again, the solar fraction uh, of the system. And all this is now, for example, for process heat, um, we have we can define the process heat here in a very easy way by the inlet temperature, the outlet temperature, and uh, the the power of the system here. The value is negative because obviously energy is um, taken out of the system. This component can be also defined as an energy source, and then the value would be positive. Uh, we can also use a profile. And uh, then we have here, for example, CSV files, which we can define. So you can define different uh, inlet uh, temperatures, different return temperatures, different uh, power requirements. 
so this to give you an idea of uh, of a few projects um now i would like to ask you if you have any questions uh you can um uh, post these questions i am i'm seeing um the the uh, the questions now i'm i have only noticed now that one participant uh, says he he could not understand me well i hope this has not been the case for everybody uh, in any case the um the webinar has also been recorded so you will receive 24 hours after this webinar a link where you can download the um the recording of the the webinar so uh, it's not uh, lost uh, i'm sorry for the technical inconvenience at the beginning um so um one question is for example regarding the different types of application of polysan i think i have explained this throughout the webinar it's um it can be used for all sorts of building integrated technologies but also for large um pv fields it is possible uh, so it's very very flexible actually for all renewable energy systems um and um you can also have very large systems as you see now here this with uh, this uh, solar collector field we have also very complex systems if you run here through uh, this um, uh, these systems you can see here that mm, they are also very complex systems and thanks to the design you can really actually design anything uh, please be aware that the educational version has the same features as the designer version so it's uh, it has the same uh, potential it has only a total different price but of course it's also only sold to universities so are there any other questions right now uh, if you have them you can you can post them uh, here um otherwise as i have said you have got our email address you can contact us anytime if you have further questions at the later stage uh, and we can arrange then also individual screen sharings to uh, deepen uh, the topics in which you are interested um, so if there aren't any further questions right now i would like to thank uh, Philip for his participation, for the very important insights which he has given us and why Polisan is really very useful for teaching at, at universities, but also for research it can be used as we, you can do very uh, complex uh, systems as we have uh, seen this. So, um, yes, please, uh, get back to us if you if you want to know more about the software and for the moment i thank you very much for your participation bye bye bye, -bye.